Hey everybody, it's Wilbits, and we're playing Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth, starting up the kind of last arc of the game, I think, right here. So now we know who the Yadigarasu really was, which hopefully you've watched that part and know what that is. And yet there remains much to this case that needs to be resolved. Like how the weapons cross country lines, for example. The two countries have incredibly strict security systems and entry procedures. Short of a miracle, it's impossible for someone to have smuggled them in. Smuggling them in, huh? Hmm. We will need to open a new line of investigation on just this aspect alone. But before we do, I would like to go through my evidence once more. Unnecessary evidence has been removed! Remaining evidence has been rearranged. Hey, there's a VCR here, sir! Now I can see what's going on in that tape Detective Bad gave us! This piece of evidence from the KG8 incident, hidden from sight for ten long years. I just know that this is related to the current case somehow. Detective Gumshoe, if you could please play the tape for us. Uh, sure thing, sir. Let's watch a movie on a VCR that we're still using, apparently. This man, it's Manny Cochin. He's dead now. Uh, and he's holding a knife in his hand. This looks like footage from a security camera at the entrance of an apartment building. An apartment building? How do you figure that? I was gonna say, how do, how, how do you know? It's just a glass door. And like you, I actually read the summary file on the KG8 incident. So it doesn't look like that, you just knew where it was. And the crime scene was the victim's own apartment. So this footage was shot at the entrance to the victim's own apartment building. Hmm. As a child, Mr. Faraday claimed that this piece of footage existed. However, no one could find it. Yes, somehow, someone was able to steal it, hide it through Arne Mr. Ernest Amano. I can see how this would have been a definitive piece, and why someone would want to hide it. Ah, uh, but it's a piece of evidence from a ten-year-old case! There's no way it's related to the case we're working on now, sir! Actually, I believe it has everything to do with the case we're working on now. The ringleader even went so far as to use Mr. Portsman to retrieve it. Which means that in this video lies a very inconvenient bit of footage to the ringleader. Where? Where? Uh, wait, what was that? Huh? That bit you played just now, please show it to me again. Uh, alright. Rewind it here. Oops, broke the tape. This car. This is something we cannot overlook. Why is that, sir? Look here, Detective Gumshoe. I'd say... Oh, it's the flag. We can't see inside very well. This is the national flag of the Principality of Codopia. And because it has the national flag on it, we know this to be an official government car. But the question we should be asking ourselves is what was a government car doing there? Ah, Miss Van Karma and Miss Edgeworth, so you were here all this time. <laughs> Ambassador Alba? Thank you very much for continuing the investigation, even at this time of night. <laughs> uh, if only I was even a tiny bit more careful. This tragedy would never have happened. I am truly sorry. This wasn't your fault, sir. This had nothing to do with how careful you were. You idiot quackers! You couldn't chase down a simple thief! I will punish myself like an old man! Now then, let's get down to the real reason why I came looking for the two of you. I've been slowly turning into wood! <sighs> No. I would like you to put the investigation on hold for a while. Can you do that? Excuse me? Excuse me? I heard you've apprehended the thief that turned this embassy upside down. 
And we are in the middle of an event celebrating our country's reconciliation. We can't exactly have the police and detectives walking around here forever. You're scaring the visitors away, so I hope that you can understand how I feel. But we must finish our investigation and resolve the remaining issues. Why don't we leave the rest to the Alabastian and Barbara Lee's police? <laughs> At least one of which I control in their entirety. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ambassador, they are so close. Just a little more and... Miss Von Kahn, I'm afraid I've made up my mind. <laughs> and without my permission, you can't proceed with your investigation anyway. Right? That's true. However, um... As he said at the very beginning, this area can be considered to be Alabastian soil, in which case we are nothing but foreigners in their land. Is this really where our investigation ends? Uh, Shifu, uh, we found Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Shifu, this way. Yo! <laughs> Agent Lang, you're back on the scene rather quickly. I thought you were flying to Zengfa or somewhere. If I laid back and took a break, I'd lose this end of my prey, Mr. Prosecutor. Agent Lang, why, why have you returned? Because I have to solve this case, no matter what. Well, I'm sorry to inform you. Uh, and don't take this the wrong way. I don't suspect you personally. Uh, however, a member of Interpol was just found to be a thief. And so... Grrr. Under these circumstances, I wish to put your investigation on hold. After all, I believe our own police can handle things from here. They are quite capable. <laughs> Uh, at this rate, our investigation really will come to a close. <laughs> Sorry, I thought of a joke earlier. It's the same one that Sheena has been laughing about this whole time. Ambassador Alba, I get it now. I really do. Oh, I'm very glad you understand how I feel. No, not that. What I was talking about is... I know who the killer is behind tonight's murder. You, you, you... No! The, the, uh... K killer Do you really mean that, Agent Lang? We each got to say one word. <laughs> Wolves don't lie. Unless they're tired and then they tell the truth, but they sleep and they sit on the ground. Then who is it? Well, let me first say that I'm not talking about Mr. Cochin's murder. That was all she nah. Hmm? Lang Zi says, the truth lies not at the exit, but rather shines outside the maze itself. The truth is unexpectedly simple. So let me ask you this, who do you think was Damask the Second's killer? Hmm, I'll tell you who. It was you, Francisca von Karma. What? Why? I was a killer? Nah, I, I would know if I was a killer. He did not die by whipping, so it could not have been me. Hey, wait, but that's impossible! Uh, yeah! Uh, although, uh, that whip is actually quite, uh... Yo! Uh! Hold your tongue on that ludicrous remark you were about to make! Agent Lang, are you seriously accusing her of murder? Yeah, I am. He doesn't appear to be joking. Hey, sis, I remember that just before Ambassador Alba went to give his speech, he called you into his office, right? It, yes, he did. But what does that have to do with anything? I'm getting to that. Furthermore, in order to solve both cases, you moved around rather freely between Alabast and Babal, did you not? Objection! And where is your evidence that I am the killer? 
Humph, I was just getting to that. Trust me, I'll show them to you in due time. Bastard Alba, in order for me to bring this case to a close, I'll need to inspect your office one more time. Will you grant me permission? Uh, things as they are, I suppose. I don't have much of a choice, do I? <laughs> Glad to have you in the chat. Good, then let's move out. Oh, and don't even think about running away, sis. My pack will be keeping a close eye on you. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. As I would have any reason, as if I would have any reason to flee. But just so the clear, your logic had better be sound. Because I'll accept nothing short of a perfect explanation. She seems rather upset. Not that I blame her. <laughs> I expected that you'd accept no less. But we'll see how long you can keep that nose of yours stuck up in the air like that. Ah! Agent Lang, as someone related to tonight's case, I request that you allow me to take part. Also, I'm the protagonist this time, and I don't have anywhere else to be. And so that I may clean up my superior's mess. Hmm, I guess I should. The more the merrier, especially when it's the peanut gallery. <laughs> oh, uh, in that case, I want to join in too. I still haven't seen what it looks like in Alabast yet. I'm basically made entirely of peanuts. I mean, if you like cayenne, then you got to mean too, pal. Peanut gallery's got, that's basically what it says on my badge. I can't sit around and do nothing when Miss Von Kama's in trouble. Yay, gummy! Let's have a competition to see who can save him first, okay? All right, I'll take you up on that. Sure. I mean, what have I got to lose? Oh yeah, I'm fired up and ready to go. As a detective, I don't believe this is something you're supposed to be excited over. <laughs> Sounds like this is going to get real interesting. Ambassador Alba, I'll be bringing these kids along for the ride. Uh, very well. But I'd like you to keep in mind that this will be your last chance. Hmm, I'll have this whole mess cleaned up before you know it. Now let's go! Okay, back to his office. We've cleaned up Mask Star to Mask the Second. It's good. Okay, now let's first go over the facts one more time. Manny Kojin's body was found over in the Secretariat's office in Babal. The weapon that took his life was one of the Alabast's ornamental knives. And then the body of Damask II, Mr. Kashi Nu, was found here in the Alabastian Ambassador's office. Through our investigation, we found that the murder weapon was this Primaduck statue. And that this is actually Babal's statue. This case, no matter how I look at it. Sis, if it wasn't you, then there's no one else who could pull this who could have pulled this off. Objection. Agent Lang, do you understand the full implications of what you're saying? Of course I do, sis, and I'm serious. You were on the trail of the tr of the smuggling ring, and you wanted any evidence you could find. And so, while people were distracted by the Adagarazi's appearance, you snuck in here. That's when you two ran into each other. You and that other thief who took advantage of the confusion from the fire. Objection. Even if all that cool, how do you explain the movement of the weapons? Hmm. Don't worry, I plan to show that you're the culprit behind that, too. You had permission to investigate both embassies at will. With that kind of free reign, you could have easily taken the weapons across country lines. Hey, hey now. Look, sis, I thought I already told you, I'm not messing around here. Ah! This case isn't directly tied to the smuggling ring, but Sheena certainly is tied to the smuggling ring. He is right in saying that she is a member of the smuggling ring. However, the connection between this case and the ring could it not be deeper than what any of us can imagine. Ugh. Let's get this ridiculous circus off of this already! Francisca, you need to calm down, because you only know the facts of the Alabastian side of the case. 
I don't believe you can see the case as a whole, and therefore solve it. What? What? But don't worry, I am taking this seriously as well, and I will prove your innocence. That's the only way to be, Mr. Prosecutor. But can you come up with anything else that can top my hypothesis? Of course, your explanation has to solve the mystery of the moving weapons as well. Of course, and I will. Let us now delve into the truth behind the murder of Damask Jr. You don't understand it, don't you, Miles Edgeworth? This isn't just a confrontation against Agent Lang. If you can't figure out how the murder of Damask II is related to the smuggling ring, then it will mean the end of our investigation. As long as I have no good counter-argument to his hypothesis, then the best I can do is walk this thin tightrope and see what I can do. Come on, Mr. Prosecutor, let's get started! Yes, let's. Alright, give me your testimony so I can start poking holes in it! One of Alibaz's knives was used in Babal to murder Mr. Cochin. And the murder weapon in the killing of Damascus II is Babal's Primaduck statue. Somehow, these two objects were able to penetrate the two countries' impenetrable security. The only one who traversed the two countries just before and after the crimes was you. So as long as I can't explain how the weapons moved about, Francisco will remain a suspect. You got it, Mr. Prosecutor. So why don't you stop giving me a hard time? So I fix my earpiece. Under these circumstances, who the heck can carry a weapon and cross country lines? I've worked through every possibility, but there's only one that's plausible. Your boss! Agent Lang, what I've learned from you just now is that you've lost sight of yourself. What are you talking about? By focusing too intently on that which is in front of us, we become blind to the truth. Don't tell me Lang Z never said anything to that effect. You prosecutor, who do you think you are speaking about Lang Z's proverbs like that? Hmm, I don't need his proverbs, because my words are all you will need to see the truth. Soon you will be saying, Miles Edgeworth says, and then something very profound. Because it's what I'm going to say, probably, during our, during our testing. One of Alabas' knives was used in Babal to murder Mr. Cochin. Hold it! I concur that this knife crossed over country lines. Good, but that's not the only thing that did. We mustn't forget about the other weapon. The knife was only one. And the murder weapon in the killing of Damath II is Babal's Primaduck statue. Hold it! So you're saying that the Primadex statue was also brought over by Francisca? Like I told you before, that's the only way it makes sense. And how exactly did she bring it over? I haven't figured that out yet. Hmm, that's a rather weak statement considering how sure you are. Maybe, but there is one thing I do know for sure. Somehow, these two objects were able to penetrate the two countries' impenetrable security. Hold it! Impenetrable? I should hardly think so. You've seen the top of the wall between the two countries, right? Who in the world could cross over that? Yeah, not even I can climb over that thing with all that barbed wire! The only way into either embassy is through the doors in the Theatrum Neutralis. So the only way for the knife and the Primadex statue to traverse the two countries is through those security camera equipped, well-guarded doors. The only one who traversed that two countries just before and after the crimes was you. Hmm. Hold it! Was Francisco really the only person to have traveled between the two countries? According to the guards at both doors, she is the only one to go back and forth. The cyst there was in Alabast when the Yadagarasu showed. And then, just before you guys found Mr. Cochin's body, she entered Babal. I think we can assume that's when she brought the knife into Babal. Objection! Then how do you explain the Primadex statue? I haven't quite figured that out yet. However, the fact that the two weapons crossed the border proves that the killer must have also traveled across the country lines. 
the only things to cross the border are the Primanek statue and the knife? It sh I should hardly think that those are the only two items, Agent Lang. So that's the thing we have to prove. Was that the statement where he says, um, the only one who traversed the two countries just before and after the crimes was you. And let's see what's shuffled around and what's missing. I'm leaning towards this photo of the Yadagarasu, taken after the first fire on the fourth and fifth floors had taken place. And it looks like it's someone crossing country lines. I'm gonna present this picture, because I think that's where we start going. <clears throat> nope! Agent Lang, about this piece of evidence. Lang Z says, Confidence is like a soul, and words without confidence are but empty shells. You shouldn't waste your breath on words you have no confidence in, Mr. Prosecutor. Although it's just as bad to say something in full confidence and be wrong. Uh... Okay, you can let him lecture you about your self-confidence like that? I don't need to be overflowing with self-confidence. I just need to think rationally. After all, I only need to be confident in the facts. Okay, alright. The only one who traversed the two countries just before and after the crimes was you. Is there a statement from somebody that says, other oh, the statements are gone. That's a shame. Pick. It's also wet for some reason. Not sure where that's going to come in. I thought for sure the photo of the Adagarasu was going to come into play at this stage. But I think that's already getting ahead. Oh! This guitar pick that we had looks an awful lot like this pedal from the flower. It's not a guitar pick, it is a pedal from a flower. Huh, okay, alright. That's... That's an important clue for when that shows up. It's not what we need right now, but I think it is an important clue. Is it maybe the dagger? Because in the knife it says, was this carried across country lines? And maybe it didn't. Show him the prosecutor's badge. If I didn't get a penalty for it, I think I would. Let's try this! Uh, it's not this. Okay. If it's not the dagger... I feel like we have to prove that either they didn't actually switch places at that time, or that it would be impossible because you would see the statue moving through, right? Because it's pretty easy to sneak a knife in, but a human-sized statue is going to be really hard to make move around. was used as a weapon. Let's get the one that's a weapon. Let's just try that. Okay, I like the music. <laughs> Agent Lang, those two items are not the only two to cross the border tonight. Ah! Oh! Damas II was killed with Babal's Primaduck statue. Yes. But if that's the case, then tell me, where did Alabast's Primaduck statue go? To Babal! Precisely, and if the two statues really were switched, then this means that both statues were smuggled across the border at some point. Which means that a total of three items were smuggled across the embassies. Hmm, I guess so, but you know what? It doesn't matter the number of items, only that the sis is the only one who could have done it. Because the only person who went back and forth between Alabast and Babal is her. Is that really true? Was there no one else who traveled between the two countries? Actually, there was definitely another person. One who paid a visit to both sides of the wall. Was it... Was it the Yadagarasu? We got that. We got the fire. Is that really so, Agent Lang? This is what I tried to present the first time! I'm always ahead of myself! <laughs> what a lousy time to try and bluff your way out of this! I checked out what the guards said, along with the security camera footage. You're not gonna overturn my hypothesis that easily. But suppose there was some other way, other than through the theater doors. What other way? The other entity that managed to cross the border unharmed. If I pointed out, it would open up a whole new possibility. And though I hesitate to bring this out, 
As long as this entity exists, the impossible road becomes a possibility. It looks like you've got some clever idea in mind. I do, and I can show it to you through a single piece of evidence. Fine then. Let's see this piece of evidence that will show me this other route. This piece of evidence will show us another way to move between the two countries. Alright, this is what I tried to do from the outset. Agent Lang, I'm sure you're all familiar with this unforgettable photo. Shh, that supernatural photo, like I said before. Humans can't fly! No, of course not. I understand that perfectly well. And don't start claiming that Sheena somehow grew wings either. I wouldn't dream of claiming that. And I won't allow you to take back what you said earlier. I'll say it again, it's not humanly possible to fly through the air without wings. So you'd better have a good explanation for this, Mr. Prosecutor. Ugh. But how can I prove who it was that flew through the air in this photo? Wait, not humanly possible. Eureka! Very well, you will have your explanation. It sounds like you have a good idea simmering inside that head of yours. Let's hear it. The face hidden within this photo's blurry trailed shadow is... The face hidden. It's... It's Manny Cochin's dead body flung through the air. Um... We don't have a lot of things with faces. Is it the... Is it the statue? Did they ring up the statue on a wire and just hurl it over there? That seems like it wouldn't work very well. I'm gonna say it's a statue. Oh! Naturally, the shadow is the third smuggled object. The Primaduck statue replica. Huh? Okay. You can't be serious, he says with sweating bullets. The Yadagarasu, or rather Callisto you dressed as Agent Shina, was inside of a ball. She dressed the replica statue up in clothes and launched it through the air. Not so fast, Not so fast indeed. Ha, Mr. Prosecutor! You've left out a very crucial bit in your explanation. I know I did. She launched it through the air? Ha! And how exactly did she do that? Did she have a cannon in her chest that she shoved the statue into and then just fired it across? Hua! He is literally baring his fangs at me, but he has a point. How exactly did it move through the air like that? As long as this remains unsolved, we won't be able to move any closer to the truth. Which reminds me, didn't he say this earlier? Hey sis, I remember that just before Ambassador Alba went to give his speech, he called you into his office, right? So just before the murder, Francisco was called here, right into this very room. If that's the case, then that may be another avenue I can pursue. Agent Lang, in order for me to answer that question, I will need to hear testimony from Miss Von Karma. <laughs> oh, what are you up to now, pretty boy? Earlier, you mentioned something of interest to me. You said that just before the murder occurred, Miss Von Karma had been in this room because Ambassador Alba had called for her. And for that reason alone, you believe her to be the killer. Yeah, I guess I did say something like that. In that case, I believe it is my duty to ask her what her side of the story is. Ha! <laughs> Do you really think a criminal would tell us the honest truth? How dare you! As I've said numerous times, there's absolutely no proof that I am the killer. Miles Edgeworth, don't tell me you suspect me too! I don't. However, I can't ignore the fact that you were in this room at one point in time. Which is why I would like to hear about your movements in this room. <laughs> Francisca, I feel that I still don't have enough information. Which is why your testimony is incredibly important to the outcome of this case. 